Hello everyone, welcome to Brick Vault. Today we are reviewing and exploring the complete collection of the LEGO Movie 2 minifigures. In this video we will go through every fig in the collection set by set. You'll see their unique features and get a current market value for each one. We received some sets from LEGO that help support the completion of this collection, so thank you guys for your support. It really, really means a lot. And I'll also be giving a projection of long-term collectability for some of the top sets. And at the end of the video, an overall collectability score of how the LEGO Movie 2 figs rank against other completed figure collections. So there is a lot to get through. Bricklink has this collection marked at 106 figs. My count here is at 118, and that's not including any of the aliens or plantables. Also, if you got time, feel free to check out our web store, www.brickfault.toys, for amazing LEGO custom building instructions linked in the description below. And let's jump into the first fig. So starting off in the year 2019 from the Lego Movie Maker set, this is the first Emmett we get. His face print is unique just for this set. His body is the same as the rest of the Emmets and Emmets from the Lego Movie 1. The Lucy is pretty common as well. She appeared in one other set like this. All prints for her are extremely common here. The first version of Rex is looking pretty good too with printing on his wrists. That hair mold was especially made just for this character and what makes him unique here is his combination of facial expressions. Here is once again the first version of Sweet Mayhem. She's only unique because she doesn't come with a helmet in this particular case and that facial expression uh, without a helmet is is unique in this combination. Does this raptor have a misprint on his eye? It feels like the eye is a little bit high up on the head, but maybe that's just my opinion. He appeared in a couple other sets. And then the Unikitty Warrior Unikitty with the angry face is actually pretty unique, both in terms of the build style, and of course the facial print is the actual special piece that only comes on this character. She's basically one dollar more than any of the other figs from this set. And then you've got Queen Whatever You Wanna Be. She of course comes in the most diverse forms from this collection and those face prints for her can be found on one other set. Here's a unique alien from the Movie Maker set and another unique alien from the Movie Maker set. They don't technically count as uh, figures but they're definitely fun to include in the collection. Here's Emmett and Benny from the Emmett and Benny's Build and Fix Workshop. This Emmett came out in three other sets. He's holding a unique print from the Dreamhouse set. It's the expression particularly that makes him unique and the same goes for Benny. It's his expression that makes him uh, somewhat particular. Next up are three brick-built figures from the Unikitty's Sweetest Friends Ever set. You have to say it like that. That's how it's spelled. First up here is Unikitty herself. Her expressions make her unique. She's got the smiling closed mouth, open happy face mouth. And then next up is the ice cream cone. Every piece on this figure is uniquely printed just for this figure. It's absolutely crazy. He's cheap now, but I do predict that it'll become a little bit more collectible in the future. And there's a great build for the chocolate bar. Those brown ingot pieces were the first time they came out in brown were actually for this guy. And the construction for his eyes are pretty excellent. Here is Emmett's Thrycycle. You can see him next to the alien. This version of Emmett is the most common. He came out in eight other sets. So he's pretty much the most common fig in the collection. And here's a closer look at that larger alien invader Duplo brick built fig. There's no official price for these guys. They technically don't count as minifigures, but I couldn't not include them in the collection. And now we're moving on to the Introducing Queen Whatever You Wanna Be set. This is easily one of my favorite sets from the collection. It's got my favorite brick built fig, but let's start off with Lucy. Her facial expression is unique just to this set. So these combination of faces is the only time you get this version of Lucy. Now we're looking at the first completed version of Sweet Mayhem. This particular expression and these pieces also came out in two other sets and she's got both a hairpiece and a helmet. All pieces except the hair are exclusive to Susan here. That's pretty good considering the single one-off nature of this set and you'll actually notice that a lot in this collection. Here is the horse version of whatever you want to be. Not officially listed as a figure because she can change shapes but then you've got Bananar here who is officially listed and officially amazing. Technically the only unique paste made for this character was the mouth print but officially there is no better Lego banana character that exists. 
period. Next up are some other brick built figures that don't necessarily officially count as brick built figures, and that's because they can all change into a bunch of different shapes. There are 15 different queen builds, five different color combos, so you can have five different versions of queen whatever you want to be built at a time. They came from the queen whatever as build whatever box set. It's significantly gone down in price since it was first released. So in terms of collectability, this may actually be the least collectible. From the Rex's Rexstreme off-roader set, there are these four characters. This is an Emmet that's also found in one other set this way. His expression is what makes him stand out. The combination of expressions makes this Rex Danger Vest figure stand out as well. He was also found in a different foil pack. This is a plantable, technically not part of the collection, but I just like him. And here is one of the Raptors, also from this set. I am counting him because some of the Raptors did have names. I don't know if a name was listed for this character, or sorry, for this animal in this set. He could either be Cobra, Rocky, Quaid, Ripley, Connor, or the other one. You guys decide. Moving on to a set that I believe will be collectible later down the line, the Ultra Caddy and Warrior Lucy set. Here we're looking at Warrior Lucy. The hair and brown scarf pieces are molded just for her. She's got dual molded legs, a special print for the stop sign, a super common expression, and technically the negative space on her hips is dark tan instead of dark bluish gray, but nobody cares. Tons of unique pieces. This version of her though is found in three other sets, so she's pretty common. Here's another brick built Duplo figure for you, the exact same as the last time, just different colors. And now here is the larger brick built fig Ultra Caddy. No official price for her, maybe 12 to 15 bucks. Unique face prints, the only one by five brick ever made for that face. And she was also built as a massive statue for the promotion of this movie, so my guess is that she's gonna become pretty collectible later down the line. From the pop up party bus, there are four new figures. The Unikitty Disco Kitty has some differences that are pretty easy to note. The prints for those feet, for example, and also the facial print. Melody has the amazing hairpiece. So amazing, in fact, that if you try to buy the hairpiece by itself, it is magically more expensive than trying to buy the Melody figure. Don't ask me how that happens on the secondhand market, but it is the case when I'm looking it up right now. Then there is Tempo. All parts are exclusive for Tempo, just like Melody. And then Zebe, exclusive to this set specifically that print for the shirt. Now we've jumped onto another decently iconic set, Emmett and Lucy's escape buggy. These three figs are brand new when it came out. Lucy's facial expression is what makes her a little bit different here. Metal Beard I almost forgot because he's basically attached to the escape buggy the whole time. This face though is found in three other sets. And then here is Sharkira. The face, legs, and torso are used on other characters from this wave and it's really the print for the visor that makes this character unique excellent print here and also anybody that says that face print wasn't inspired by Furiosa is is just lying to themselves. Sweet Mayhem's Sistar Starship gave us two new figures. This Emmet has a face print that makes him unique to just this set and one other. And for Sweet Mayhem, uh, you actually can see that she doesn't have a head. Just kidding, it gets stuck in the helmet sometimes. Yes, but this face was found in just one other blister pack. And then the Emmet's Dreamhouse Rescue Rocket set is probably my favorite standalone one and we get not three but two <laughs> unique figures from this set. The first one is Rex Danger Vest spacesuit jetpack figure. The print for his body is totally unique. He's got awesome arm printing, dual molded legs with great printing there, a special helmet and also a special color for the visor as well. Even a printed piece on the very back for the jetpack. His face print is also unique and it makes sense that he's just a little bit more collectible than some of the other figures. There is the Unikitty Warrior Kitty. And with the addition of this alternate expression and this slightly different piece, you can have Unikitty sleeping and curled up. I just bought some extra parts so I could have both figures built at the same time. And then from the Emmett's Builder Box, there's no unique figures here, but this little alien Duplo fig was included. He's a slightly different construction and color. And also Lucy's Builder Box has no unique fig except for this little Unikitty who's sitting in that print for the bottom of the body is also unique just to this figure. Metal Beard's Heavy Metal Motor Trike set gives us these two figures plus an animal. For Sweet Mayhem, this is the only time we get an angry face for her, which is kind of cool. And then Apocalypse Benny looks kind of amazing. The visor print is the only unique print for this whole figure, and I love that he's got a robotic arm. That's originally from the 2008 Agents theme. The shark is not a character, but the shark does have a metallic eye patch print, which is unique. The Battle Ready Batman and Metal Beard set has 
three unique figures. Metalbeard's kind of pushing it here. Starting off with easily one of the more interesting or unique versions of Batman. He's a pretty excellent figure. The armor piece actually has real rubber bits that make up the tire detailing on the shoulders. Excellent body printing through and through. You do see another version of this guy with the same cape and armor, so the printing is exclusive for the torso and legs. And then there is Maddox. All the pieces on him have been used in other versions of other characters. The face in particular was Hammerhead's face from the first Lego movie. This metal beard here is not officially listed, so it's hard to lock down a price for him. And all I can really say is that he is made of nightmare fuel, just a little bit. The Shimmer and Shine Sparkle Spa set has one of the highest counts of unique figures, which is pretty cool. Archimedes has an excellent set of prints for this character. I feel like he could get uh, modified in really fun ways. Definitely reminds me of uh, Jake, just a little bit from Adventure Time. All the pieces for Balthazar are exclusive. That includes the shiny cape, and the Balthazar bat also looks pretty darn excellent. If you've ever seen Benny Happy, you have not seen him this happy yet. His face is exclusive to the set, and the octopus build here is named Eight, even though it's only got four legs. This is the only time that tentacle piece has been made in lavender. And then we've got a similar build style to Benarnar. This is Flaminga. Some of these pieces are uniquely molded in certain colors for this character. And the official name for this version of Lucy is Sparkle Rinse Lucy. The hair color is obviously new here. It appeared in a couple other sets. And then this is a happy, calmed down Unikitty, even though she's sort of in her battle-ready warrior look. From Queen Whatevera's Not-So-Evil Space Palace set come five new figures starting off with Bachelor Batman. You'll notice that the price here is uh, reflective of a common theme you'll find throughout the rest of the collection. Something really pops out as strange here really quick. There is a little bit of chrome printing on the front of the legs just above the dual molded white. That almost feels like a mistaken misprint, especially when you can see the divide between the belt uh, and the bat symbol on the rest of the torso. Just thought I would point that out. It feels a little bit off. Now we're looking at Celeste. Everything on her is unique. And then here is a simplified version of ice cream cone. The arms are printed onto the body because I guess they just didn't feel like going through the extra effort. And because he came out in a more expensive set than the better version of this character, he's actually more expensive, which is really strange. Here's another version of whatever you want to be. Just a few different colors built into the body here. And we have one of the royal guards. All the prints here are exclusive to just this character. And some parts are done in certain colors only just for this character. Here are all of the unique figures and or creatures from the Rexelsior set, one of the few sets that hasn't really gone down in price too much since the release of the Lego Movie 2 line. And we're starting off with Rex Danger Vest. His facial expression makes him unique here. And then the Stubble Trouble Emmet, which also has a unique facial expression and he's wearing Rex's vest. Just the torso is a repeat, but he's actually got still his own arms. That makes the torso piece entirely unique. And then we are looking at the Emmett statuette and the Rex Danger Vest statuette together. And we already got a blue raptor, but this one also uh, came with a few of the gray and green ones or metallic gray and green ones. And all right, we're moving on up to the biggest set that I think a lot of you guys were waiting for in this video, the Welcome to Apocalypse Berg set. 13 figs were included, all but two are exclusive to just this set. That would be Emmett and Wildstaff. By far, the figures and the set itself are the most collectible. Also, I'll just say right off the bat that almost all of the detailing for a lot of the characters is totally exclusive to that particular minifigure. Now let's jump in the Where Are My pants guy or the apocalypse version of him. The dual molded legs are an excellent touch for this figure in particular and I gotta say that torso print is probably as close as we are going to get to Ash from Army of Darkness or Evil Dead. I almost forgot this guy. He was basically part of the background on this set. The Armory Skeleton Mannequin is his official name but technically counts as a minifigure. Then there is the battle ready Batman but now he's just got a little bit of extra detail. You'll notice the dual molded arms and 
and legs. There's a little bit of different printing details for his body as well. And I do think he looks a little bit better than the other version, but not insanely better. This minifigure is $25. Very, very expensive version of Batman. And now we are jumping down to Chainsaw Dave, formerly known as Surfer Dave. He's still got his board shorts on and I think flip-flops. Everything here is exclusive except for the hair. And now we're jumping down to Fuse. Fuse has a face mask that is exclusive and the legs are shared with another fig from this set, but that print is also just exclusive, the legs specifically for this set. More DC titles have entered the game. Green Lantern Apocalypse Berg version is here. Everything on him is exclusive, including the shoulder cloth piece. He's probably got the best alternate expression. I keep it as his primary. He's a $15 fig. And then I guess the designers just could not help themselves. We've got Harley Quinn. She's officially titled Apocalypse Berg Harley Quinn, but we all know that she is Suicide Squad Harley Quinn. The details are pretty much exact and spot on. Frankly, they did a good job at recreating this character from the movie. The details actually are pretty darn excellent. And because she has just struck a chord, so to speak, with audiences, she's the most expensive figure in this collection, coming out to $60 brand new if you wanted to get her uh, in mint condition. Larry the Barista, I believe, is another returning character. This is the only time that Mohawk was made in dark brown. The pauldron is also pretty rare. Torso face, legs exclusive, and now we are looking at Mohawk, who also has a mohawk. You'll recognize that face print. Leg print is exclusive. And sorry if I'm going fast, there's a lot of cool details here, but we are now looking at Roxy and only the head print or the face print is exclusive to this figure. Still a really interesting looking character though. And the last fig from this set is the Scribble Cop. He uh, has got a pretty interesting expression, pretty awesome body detailing in general. If you wanted to make a Mad Max Lego minifigure, look no further. All right, let's move down the line to the Benny's Space Squad set. Also one of the most popular sets from the wave and the cheapest. Exclusive to this set is the pink minifigure. This is the only time this air tank torso or helmet are made in this color. And I think just because this is a pink minifigure, it is just a little bit more expensive than the other space guys. In white, this classic space astronaut uh, only has an exclusive helmet mold. These aren't the exact same helmets that you're normally used to seeing their style to look like the old ones and the same goes for the yellow guy here just the helmet is exclusively molded for this color also this droid i included and then realized later that he was part of the lego movie one line so technically he doesn't belong in this collection video but he's here and i'm not taking him out moving down the line from emmett's triple decker couch mech comes the uni kitty rampage kitty obviously the face print is unique to just this minifigure and also this is the only time that that brush piece comes in red, which is super, super rare. That's a $9 fig for a relatively cheap set, so you know that that's a pretty wanted fig. And then there's actually quite a few figs from the Good Morning Sparkle Babies set. Kind of a fun little side set to get. The uh, Emmett has an exclusive facial expression. Same thing goes for Wild Style. I think it's because they're surrounded by Sparkle Babies and they're just so happy. And now we're looking at the two Sparkle Babies. I'm definitely getting a Bowie vibe from one of them, but it goes without saying these are the only ways you can get these types of baby prints and colors. Uh, it's, it's from these sets. Size absolutely does not determine price when it comes to uh, the most desirable figs from here. And we are moving now down to the Sistar Party Crew set. We're taking a look now at Stardust Benny. Legs, torso, head, glasses exclusive. Probably one of the best visor molds ever made if I don't say so myself. And then the Unikitty here is technically the same as the Disco Kitty that we got last time, except this time she has a different facial expression and she comes with this boa piece, which they've never made anything like it before, not in a different color, and it's never appeared in any other set. It really is a unique sort of accessory. Disco Metal Beard is not an official figure here, but his facial print is exclusive, so I'm gonna technically count him as one of the figs for the final count. Favorite part here is the piano leg, but really he is just kind of a, 
a crazy looking character in this one. Now getting into the last set set of the wave, the Wild Mayhem Starfighter, there's actually quite a few figs here. First one being a cheerful version of Sweet Mayhem. This is an exclusive face print. Same thing goes for the Wild style here. Her expressions don't appear anywhere else. Can you guess what's different about this, this Rex Danger Vest? Yep, that's right. His facial expression is, is different in this set compared to another one. And why would I want to uh, change things up? Yes, that is what is also exclusive about the Emmett in this set. Also, he comes with a Rex hairpiece in lighter brown that doesn't appear in any other set but this. But, but, if you were trying to order this from Bricklink, that piece is not included with this fig, so you have to be careful. Now we're moving on to some figures that appeared in poly bags and foil packs and gifts with purchases, any type of promo. Here's just a different combination of pieces we've seen from Rex already. He appeared in the Rex Plantimal Ambush. Here's a different color Alien Invader from the Lucy vs. Alien Invader poly bag. Here's the Mini Master Building metal beard once again nothing exclusive for this guy he just he's just cool and he's different and he's unique in terms of his parts then from the starstruck Emmett we have the exclusive face print here for this guy the Rex with jetpack foil pack has a different configuration for his jetpack compared to the last one there's also an accessory set here for a different version of Sharkira once again just a different combination of pieces we've already seen but that is not the case for the sewer babies both their faces and and the prints for their bodies are uh, unique just for this set. Here's Sweet Mayhem. She doesn't come with any types of accessories. And the last time she didn't have accessories, like in the very first set, she had a different expression. And there you have it for any and all of the sets, promos, poly bags, all of that stuff is finished for the collection. Now let's jump really quick into the collectible minifigure series. There were 20 in total, and let's pop through them in order real quick. First one here is Emmett. Headphones, hair, phone print, and face print are exclusive to him. Honestly, nothing special. Only the hood is exclusive for Lucy, so even slightly less special in my opinion, even though the hood is a cool piece. Benny has an exclusive face print and toolbox print, and now that LEGO got some of the obligatory main characters out of the way, let's get into some weird ones. Giraffe Guy, obviously everything's exclusive on him, and he's one of the more expensive or desirable collectible figs from this wave. Maybe people were nostalgic about Toys R Us shutting down, who knows? Now we're looking at Crayon Girl. Purple's one of my favorite color, so I am not complaining here. Excellent little body piece. Then next up is Sherry Scratch and Post, maybe one of my favorite characters, and I've got to assume the cat next to her is Jeff. This really is a pretty random assortment. It almost feels like a regular CMF series. This is Hula Lula. She's totally exclusive. The accessories in her hands are not. And then we've got Watermelon Dude. Let's keep it simple, fun, relaxed. He's got sunglasses. Who's complaining? And then an actual main character that we did want to have. This is Flashback Lucy from when she's in the pop band. Let's take a total left turn with the swamp creature. Once again, not complaining, just totally random and it's it's pretty awesome. Didn't realize what her name was until I was doing this video. Her name is Candy Rapper. Makes sense now that you're looking at the color combination. That's another bandmate, I think, with Lucy. Now we've got Gone Golfin President Business. Pretty decent prints here. In fact, I'd say some of the most technically excellent stuff for this guy, even though he's not the most exciting and he's definitely not exciting exciting compared to Apocalypse Berg Abe. Frankly, LEGO minifigure designing does not get better than this. If you guys are looking for a better LEGO minifigure on the planet, uh, you'll be hard pressed to find one. This is just amazing that this guy exists. Vest Friend Rex is the official title of this version of Rex. I like the cowboy hat. The chaps look pretty good, but I think Kitty Pop grabs your eye a little bit better as a fig. Just really loud, bright colors. Excellent mold for the hair with the ears. And then, let me just show all four off at the same time, we've got the complete gang from the Wizard of Oz. This is a really unexpected surprise. I'm sure the designers couldn't just make one or two of these characters. They had to do everybody. Official names are Dorothy Gale, the Cowardly Lion, the Scarecrow, and Tin Man. Personal favorite here is the Tin Man. They're all also a little bit more expensive than some of the collectible figures in this wave, so I have a feeling they're going to probably appreciate and value a little bit more, a little bit faster in the long run. And then the last of this collectible wave 
it is by far the most terrible. It's just another Unikitty with probably a throwaway expression. She's listed at number 20, so they did everything and then they're like, oh, we need to add something else. Uh, let's, let's just put a Unikitty in there. On top of that, she doesn't even have the normal inkwell and 1x3 inverted plate piece. It's just a regular plate and like a stud with a hole in the up. I don't know. It's just, it feels super lazy. But if you thought it was over, I actually saved the best for last and the best was the first. There was one figure for the Lego Movie 2 that came out in 2018 before everything I just showed you. And I say best, well, whatever. It's the most rare at least. This is the San Diego Comic-Con 2018 exclusive Apocalypseburg Unikitty. She comes with two expressions and that's actually the only thing that makes her unique here are the two unique facial expressions. If any of you guys know how the distribution process goes to get some of these figs, it's very difficult. They're very rare and only because of their sort of position in nerd or pop culture, she, like the other SDCC Comic-Con figs, is just very expensive to get. She's around 150 to 200 bucks if you were to get her on eBay right now. Just to put things into perspective, a final count for this collection before Unikitty would be 460 to like 475 dollars if you were to just order everything from Bricklink, shipping prices not included. But if you were to add Unikitty, it would be closer to 700 dollars, maybe a little less. Before I jump into final thoughts on this minifigure collection, LEGO did send us some of these sets as part of the support program. So let me first say thank you, and I'm also going to be doing a quick overview on them. Basically share my thoughts and also rate these sets on their later collectability or use for custom building, because I feel like that's the most relevant way to talk about them right now. Starting off with the Shimmer and Shine Sparkle Spa set, there's a lot of unique figures included here, a decent amount of interesting trans blue pieces which I think are a little bit difficult to find on the brick buying market at least in some of these colors and shapes but overall not a huge amount of playability and the price for this set has gone down significantly you can get it for under its original market value if you were to buy it right now originally priced at $70 brick set has it down to 34 brand new so I'd say it's not bad for breaking down for later custom builds but really if you wanted to do that the next set Queen whatever is not so Evil Space Palace has got some really interesting larger white pieces, lots of fun trans blue windscreen dome pieces, and tons of gold flexi tubes. This has gone down also since its original retail, selling for $100 US, now down to roughly $60 brand new. But you also do get a relatively unique and collectible Batman minifigure, which always goes over well on the secondhand market. Personally, I also think it just looks a lot more cool and visually interesting. This particular set has a few more play functions and left built looks a lot better than the Shimmer and Shine Sparkle Spa one. Now, if you're not into that general aesthetic, the Rexelsior set is by far one of the most interesting and unique ones. It's one of the very few sets that has not significantly dipped in price after the initial wave. Brick set has it listed at maybe a $20 loss, but honestly, on the secondhand market, I'm seeing it selling for roughly the same price as its original retail value, which is $150. The uniqueness of this set cannot be understated. It is a giant spaceship in the shape of a fist. The micro builds give it a really nice scale of it just being huge. Inclusion of micro figures is pretty nice, though the actual minifigures aren't considered particularly collectible, even though the detailing isn't too bad. Of course, you have the extremely unique play function of being able to hold this ship like a fist, similar to how maybe like one of those giant Hulk fist toys works. So I have a feeling it's going to remain one of those slightly more iconic sets for later down the line. There's also a decent amount of pieces that are good for breaking down for the second hand market, though dark blue is slightly more specialty and not quite as common as a lot of the ones you would have gotten in white for the other two. Maybe that's a good thing. The Emmett's triple decker couch mech set is a pretty interesting one. The mech itself is honestly not very good. The actual play set itself, it doesn't stand well. Well, it's a little bit more delicate than I think most people would prefer from a small mech like this, but the iconic nature is pretty cool. This was a great moment in the movie, and it's a nice bridging between the Lego Movie 1 and the second part. The Unikitty is by far the best figure in the set, even though she's not like a minifigure minifigure, but this, like several other sets in the line, has dropped 
down around maybe 33, a third of the percent has gone down. It is 20 bucks brand new on the second hand market, even though it originally sold for 30. Now breaking that trend, the Good Morning Sparkle Babies set is actually listed a little bit higher on the second hand market now. And something tells me it has everything to do with the Sparkle Babies and nothing to do with basically anything else. It's not a bad way to get the wild style with that crazy hairpiece, though for some, I think the Bowie Baby basically makes it all worth it. Also, this set, the Sistar Party Crew, has not significantly dropped, which is nice. This is by far the most unique and interesting version of Metal Beard. I love the piano build. Those are actually some great prints to get. Unikitty's Boa is by far the most unique piece here, and it's still probably one of the most unique things made for the entire year of 2019. But something tells me this doesn't have quite the iconic nature or staying power as some of the more recognizable sets from the Lego Movie 2. Moving on to the last one here that was part of the support program, the Wild Mayhem Starfighter set. Kind of looks like a manta ray. It's definitely an interesting shape for a spaceship, and they did a good job at making it swooshable considering its decently large size. The figures technically are all exclusive to this set, though none of them are super, super interesting or unique or different. So this is one of those sets that is going to probably fall into relative obscurity, being mid-sized and just not nearly as interesting or iconic as the Sweet Mayhem Sistar Starship from the first wave. Speaking of which, I think that's got a lot of resellability. The iconic nature of that set as well as the Emmett and Lucy's Escape Buggy one is probably going to do really well too, especially because there's that great Mad Max vibe to it. The Emmett's Dreamhouse Rescue Rocket set is probably one of my personal favorites considering there's a few different build options to it. And then by far the two most collectible sets are ones that you would definitely want to hang on to are the Welcome to Apocalypse Berg, that one seems kind of obvious, and the Benny's Space Squad set. That one sold out pretty quick, and even though there's plenty of people that have multiple of this one, classic space is never going to die. People are always going to want different color versions of simple spacemen and women, so it's definitely something worth holding on to as well. Final thoughts for the collection in general. The unique features of the figures for LEGO Movie 2 go as follows. There's not too many repeated figures or prints in general. For example, Star Wars collections often have switched around faces with body prints for basic characters, but that rarely, almost never happens with any of the figures you see for this collection. There's a lot of figures also that are just brick built, which is also extremely uncommon. Definitely an interesting diversity of shapes and sizes and colors, and I feel like that was very intentional. So all in all, they did a great job, I think, fleshing out the universe of this particular theme. And that makes sense because this is one of the larger licenses that of course LEGO would really, really want to do well. That's usually the case, always the case, in fact, for any of their movie themes. Now you guys might have been able to guess based on the projected prices. The community has spoken and so far there isn't a lot of demand for long-term collectability in general and it's definitely a telling sign when the most expensive or sought after figures from this set are just simply DC figures that happen to be in a Lego Movie 2 theme. At the end of the day only time will really tell uh, as to how desirable these sets will be for people in the later market over the years but I project this to to be somewhere in the mid section of maybe like a five or six out of ten in terms of desirable collectible figures to have. Anyways, this was an insanely long video to watch. If you stuck through the whole thing, thank you so much. Took forever to put it together, but I always learn something new when doing these crazy weird deep dives into themes or collectible figs. The formatting for this particular video was a little bit different, so let me know what you guys think about that in the comments below. If you enjoy our content, you can always like or subscribe, get up, stand up, stretch or something, you just listen to a long YouTube video. Thank you again for sticking around, and we'll see you next time at Brick Vault.